Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, welcome back. So today's module is about uh, chemical kinetics and we will be looking into the different theories of reaction rate and chain mechanisms and the majority of this material is taken from uh, combustion physics by Professor C.K. Law and combustion by Professor Arvin Glassman. Okay. So uh, what did we learn last week? Last week we learned about chemical thermodynamics. What did chemical thermodynamics tell us? Chemical thermodynamics related the initial and final equilibrium states of a reactive mixture. That is if you are given a reactive mixture methane and air and it will tell you what will be the concentration of the different products like CO2, water, carbon monoxide if it is formed, hydrogen if it is formed. right? But you see, it did not tell you about which path it took. Okay. Why the path is important, it will, it will become apparent in a very short amount of time and the time it took for the process to happen. Okay. It just tells you as you know in thermodynamics, thermodynamics does never tell you about the path, it tells you about the initial and the final states. Okay. Often as you will see, the path of the process is very important and that is where chemical kinetics comes in. Chemical kinetics describe the paths and the rates of the individual reactions and reactants. Now you might think that what are these individual reactions and reactants? Now when you talk about hydrocarbon combustion or hydrogen combustion, hydrocarbon or hydrogen does not become water or carbon dioxide respectively as this might be in one step. Okay. The hydrocarbon fuel breaks down into small components and it undergoes numerous elementary reaction because before it can become the products carbon dioxide and water and as such these paths can be very complex. As you see here there can be up to 10 to the power 3 intermediates formed for a large hydrocarbon molecule which happens practically for example you say you consider kerosene or you consider gasoline, you consider diesel, you consider biofuels. The combustion of these can involve up to 1000 intermediates and 5000 elementary reactions or even larger this can this this is just these are just some uh, uh, some uh, uh, prototype numbers it can go even larger so there is so as such combustion never happens combustion reaction never happens in one step it happens through a three series of steps through a series of reactions and as you will see that these series of reactions that are involved often this reaction happen in series often they happen in parallel and the series of reactions and the species that are involved, they have different times associated with them. Okay. They do not have similar times. So as, as a result of this, chemical kinetics become very important. It tells you how does the mixture get from the initial to the final state and how long does it take. So this is the thing. Now in the introductory session itself, we told that combustion essentially rests on two pillars chemical kinetics and fluid mechanics right so as you understand chemical kinetics is very important now you can argue that okay i am a combustion engineer suppose i want to design an engine do i should i know about chemical kinetics the answer is yes let's consider that what are the steps involved in designing a new engine okay now if you are an engineer if you work alone or you work in a team suppose you are designing a new engine first you will do a one day analysis right in the one day analysis suppose you are des designing a gas turbine engine okay you will do a one day analysis of the different components of the different parts right you will uh, do uh, analysis in the thermodynamic analysis and flow analysis in the intake in the in the in the compressors in the combustor in the turbine in the nozzle okay in the combustor first you will if you are doing a one day analysis you are involved in gross numbers you will do uh, uh, like a con consider the combustor like a black box you will consider air entering you will consider fuel entering and uh, you will be interested to know what is the temperature at the exit of the of the of the exit flow 
and the composition of the exit flow right. Of course, that is very important and that comes as you see have seen from the previous uh, lecture these question that what will be the approximate temperature of the exit flow and what will be the composition of the exit flow this can be answered by chemical equilibrium considerations. Adiabatic flame temperature and associated heat of formation and heat of combustion will tell you the approximate temperature of the exit flow and uh, the equilibrium calculations will tell you about the uh, pr uh, composition of the exit flow right. But now you want to refine your analysis this is just a 1D analysis you cannot design an, an engine into or a combustor as such just by 1D analysis. Suppose now you will go to a CFD analysis okay you can use your own uh, code if you have or you can use a commercial code or you, have, you can use a research code to design the combustor right. So now here in the combustor you will consider this uh, all the governing equations which will come later that is the flow equations which are basically conservation equations uh, mass balance, momentum balance, energy balance and you will have to consider the reaction mechanisms okay. The reaction mechanisms are nothing but it is a description a comprehensive description of chemical kinetics okay. So you see to even nowadays when you have to design an engine at a very at a sophisticated level you want to know how you are basically you want to predict or you want to ensure while you are the design phase itself that the combustion will be stable whether the flame that you will get inside the engine whether that can be stabilized at all in the in the in the combustor or not whether that can be ignited at all or not whether it will blow off or not it will just lift go away from the combustor or not to predict and to ensure that this will be reasonably satisfied this properties that you will have stable combustion inside the combustor which is very necessary for power generation inside the engine you will need to incorporate all these reaction mechanisms into the flow. Now the reaction mechanism that we will incorporate can be of different levels of complexity okay but at least it has to be there in some form otherwise you cannot do a combustion calculation. So inherent in the combustion calculations okay you do whether you are an engineer whether you are a scientist or a mix of both chemical kinetics is an integral part of combustion okay. So please pay attention to this lecture uh, today and uh, we will discuss uh, different uh, aspects about chemical kinetics that how do you describe kinetics what is the uh, different um, uh, what is what is a reaction rate okay what what are the properties or what are the parameters does reaction rate depend on how can the reaction rate be connected to the consumption rate of a different species okay and then the reaction rate involves several constants how do you even can estimate those constants okay what are the theories that goes into this constants those will be uh, discussed and then we will discuss some basic uh, basic uh, some generalized uh, uh, reactions that happen in combustion and uh, we will finish with some uh, topics on how you can uh, measure actually those reaction rates in the laboratory. So today's lecture is very important and forms a very important part of uh, this uh, series of uh, lectures on combustion in air breathing aero engines okay. So as I said this is outline we will talk about the phenomenological law of reaction rates how does it depends on what are the parameters it depends on as you will see it depends on essentially temperature and concentration and of course concentration can be shown to depend on other things like pressure etc okay. And then you will have theories of reaction rates you will have the Arrhenius law and how in the Arrhenius law the parameters that goes into Arrhenius law how they can be estimated by collision theory transition state theory and then we discuss chain mechanisms straight and branched that is what makes this is you will see that this branching of this um, chain carriers of the chain mechanisms is will is the thing that makes combustion a very unique uh, chemical uh, uh, phenomena okay. So first uh, first things first kinetics has to begin with the law of mass action okay. Now for a single step forward reaction okay that is this can be true for any reaction as such okay any uh, uh, any any reaction this is once again uh, if you remember from the previous class this is a generalized description of a chemical reaction these are the reactants as you will see okay. 
and these are the products. Okay. And the rate at which this reaction happen, this is the first time we are introducing this quantity. You will see what uh, this rate constant essentially, this is called the rate constant of this reaction for the forward reaction as such is given by Kf. Okay. Now, as I said this is a generalized form. So, if you remember I will show you to, uh, this to you once again because uh, uh, it is very important to understand what this generalized form represents and what are these different things represents. Okay. Uh, because we will be using this, uh, this, this we will be building the entire uh, of today's lecture based on this consideration of this generalized uh, form of the uh, of the of the reaction uh, the representation. All right. So uh, please pay attention to this. These are the stoichiometric coefficients. These m is the species name. This is the stoichiometric coefficient on the product side. This is the species name once again. So, when you write i is equal to 1 to n, it actually i 1 to n goes from it considers all the species that is possible in the system. So, it contains both reactant species as well as the product species. Just to give you an example, if you uh, this is your specific reactions that you are interested in H plus O2 goes to OH plus O. Now, I keep on writing this reaction there is one more reason as you will see later in later class that this is uh, the most important reaction in hydrocarbon oxidation. This is the most important combustion reaction. Okay. So, that is why I keep on writing this. Uh, this will be then uh, we will also develop a feeling for this and uh, um, uh, we will discuss things on terms of this. So, suppose this is the reaction re reaction we are interested in and this is the Kf is the rate constant uh, of that reaction. Okay. So, then if you see here the new one then if we just tabulate uh, these things once again, uh, say this is nu i, okay, uh, first uh, let me say that this is i, this is m i and this is nu i. So, i is basically 1, 2, 3, 4. Why i goes from 1 to 3, 4? Here 4 is equal to n as you see, because you see there are 1, 2, 3, Four, uh, four species involved. Okay, so I goes from one to four. Okay, M one is H, M two is O two, M three is OH, and M four is O, and all these new I's are essentially one one. Um, uh, one. This is zero because on the reactant side the stoichiometric coefficient of OH and O is zero. So, actually this is essentially nu i dashed and nu i double dashed is this is 0, this is 0, this is 1, this is 1. Okay. So, these are the, uh, this is how you essentially represent a generalized reaction because you see I mean there is no point writing that oh, there will be 2 species, there will be 3 species. Typically n goes from 1 to 4 or uh, 1 to uh, typically goes typically n is essentially 4 or 5 in a or, or 6 in a in a given uh, in a in, in normally in hydrocarbon reaction mechanisms, but uh, we need to write it in a generalized manner because otherwise as we will see that we cannot make the the, the equations that will arise uh, be very clear. And this is also as I said before that this is also the uh, this is also the way like uh, modern uh, modern combustion literature uh, or manuals or manuals of different uh, codes are represented in this form. So, it is important for you to familiar get familiarized with this kind of representations. Okay. But with this uh, now it should be clear that what I am meaning by nu i dash nu i double dashed and i and m i. Okay. So, let us uh, erase this this is um, but if you are not yet clear just spend a minute uh, with yourself and uh, just think over it and it will be clear in a given second. But this is very important because as I said that all this is a foundation and all the later analysis will be built on this. Okay. So, now we can define a molar rate of change that is the rate of change of the concentrations of the species I which can be consumption or generation. Or, or production rather. So, this nu i cap is the rate of change of the concentration of species i. 
okay is the rate of change of the uh, the of the uh, of the of the production of the species i this omega cap omega i cap essentially represents the rate of change of the concentration of species i which can be consumption or it can be production all right now this is not reaction rate please keep in mind this is the rate of change of concentration of a given species but of course you can connect this to the reaction rate and this is how you connect it this is because as you have seen before that the rate of change of species i and species j in a given reaction are connected to this relationship and because this is true for any species ij inside the in the reaction mechanisms this can be represented by this generalized omega which you see it does not have a omega i or omega j and this is the reaction rate so please understand the difference this is the rate of change of the concentration of species i this is the reaction rate these two are not same quantities but they are proportional and the proportionality constant is given by the change of the stoichiometric co coefficient between the product side and the reactant side all right so please keep these things in mind now with this information we can come to the law of mass action which says the most important thing that is reaction rate which was our omega is proportional to the product of the concentrations and scaled reaction rate is given by a reaction rate constant which is a function of time which is a function of temperature and this capital pi is essentially a continued product from i equal to 1 to n and it is a continued product on the concentration of the species i with an exponent of nu i dashed okay but note this is nu i dashed only okay so this nu i dash is very important because this nu i dash is non zero only when you are considering reactants okay nu i dashed is equal to zero if you are considering products so the reaction rate is only dependent on the concentration of the reactants which appears on the left hand side okay but then do do we mean that we do not consider the products at all no it is not that if you are interested in finding the reaction rate of the backward reaction this is essentially the reaction rate of the forward reaction then you can write it like this the reaction rate of the backward reaction is given by this way this is the backward reaction rate constant times this product i is equal to 1 to n c i nu i double dash of course at equilibrium your rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the backward reaction will be same okay but here you see that the reaction rate is equal to the product of the concentrations of the reactants raised to their stoichiometric constants okay now this is because there is a reason to it okay though it is phenomenological it was found out phenomenologically but there is a reason is that the reason is that we'll come also this later that essentially it comes from a macroscopic view point where you think that this reaction rate constant is essentially proportional to the collision frequency and of course the collision frequency can be considered to be proportional to the product of the species concentration the more species you have the more chance is that there will be more collision of that species involving that species right so that is why this comes but we will arrive at this uh, in a very rigorously using two theories so we will not discuss too much about this at this state but please keep in mind this formula this is i mean if you are involved in combustion in any form this is 
definitely 50 percent of combustion okay, kinetics. Now, proportionality constant K f, what does K f depend on? K f is essentially a reaction rate constant and it is primarily a function of temperature and this temperature for uh, function uh, dependence is given by this is a constant B times the T to the power of alpha E to the power of minus E A by R 0 to E A is you call your activation energy and R 0 is universal gas constant and T is of course, the temperature. We will come to this later. This is just for the sake of completeness we are defining K F here. Now, let us give the example of another one again H plus H O 2 goes to H plus O H. Okay. So, then I can find out find out what is omega H and that will be given by that will be essentially related to I can say that this is 0 minus 1 is equal to omega H O 2 0 minus 1 0 is my new i double dashed 1 is my new i dashed this is my new j double dashed this is my new j dashed and this is, is equal to reaction rate okay and this is this guy is of course the rate of change of the species h and that is equal to d h dt and if I substitute it here and then consider this and this and this is what I can write. Okay. So, if I just have to simplify I can write from here d h d t uh, minus of d h d t is equal to omega is equal to minus of d h o 2 d t okay. and and that is given by this omega is equal to k f times h times h o 2 because this is the law of the mass action. So, if we remember omega uh, for uh, is given by the in the generalized form is given by k f t times this one product of i is equal to 1 to n c i nu i dashed c i is the concentration of the ith species. So, for i equal to 1 my c is essentially h for i is equal to 2 my c is essentially h o 2. So, we get k f times h nu i dashed is equal to 1 this is I can write as 1 I can write as 1. So, this is raised to the power 1 and is raised to the power of 1 and this is what we get. Okay. You can you should consider uh, any other reaction that you know and find out using the law of mass action what should be the reaction rate for that reaction. Okay. Now, what is the expression for the backward re reaction? That is a question. Okay. You can also uh, try to estimate that and uh, we will come to this question later. So, as you see that every forward reaction must have a backward reaction okay. and when there is chemical equilibrium the forward reaction and the backward reactions are essentially constant or is essentially equal. So, k f uh, so omega f minus omega b equal to 0 if there is a backward reaction. Okay. So, then the net reaction rate as you see here is given by this is for a given species 
uh, we can uh, we can essentially write the rate of change of a given species i is given by omega i cap and it it is the rate of change of the species i is contributed by both the rate of change of the species i in the forward reaction as well as in the backward reaction and so these are the two contributions and then if we summarize these two things if we sum these two things we arrive at this formula and then we are give we are left with we can find out the complete reaction rate for a reaction which involves both forward and backward reactions and this is given by this thing. So, we can say that this is the forward part and this is the backward part okay. and this is the net reaction rate. Okay. And of course, this is equal to 0 when you have chemical equilibrium. So, at chemical equilibrium as I said that omega is equal to 0. So, we can basically uh, set this to 0 and bring this k f and k b on the same side and we when we take the ratio of k f and k b we find we are left with this thing the spy uh, goes the product goes from 1 to n c i raised to the power of nu i double dashed minus nu i dashed which is nothing but our equilibrium constant k c in terms of equilibrium constant in terms of concentration which is nothing but k c and of course, you can have a relationship between k p and k c also. So, for this we can essentially now replace this as a function of k c k b because normally the it is difficult to estimate the reaction the backward reaction rate, but it is much simpler to find out the k c uh, because those are mainly tabulated. So, using the forward reaction rate and using the k c value you can find out the net reaction rate for a given reaction. Okay. Now, if it is so that your backward reaction is happens at a very very small uh, rate which is often the case say in kind of branching reactions where which produces radicals. So, collision between radicals is kind of not very probable. So, in those cases in cases of like branching reactions you can safely neglect the backward reaction rate and in that case you are only left with omega is equal to k f times product of a for goes from i is equal to 1 to n uh, c i nu i dashed all right. So, this is about the reactions.